Today I will show you how to achieve buttery smooth footage from your GoPro after the fact, why ND filters might be bad for this, and also the best settings for success. All that and more coming right up. Hey guys, Felix here with Quadcopter Guide and on this channel I help you get the most out of your drones and other camera gear. Today we're talking GoPro and specifically how to get buttery smooth footage out of your GoPro even after the fact. Maybe you forgot to turn on stabilization, maybe you want to achieve stabilization that's even better than the in-camera stabilization on GoPros. So that's what we're going to show you how to do today. We're going to jump on the computer, show you all the settings I use, and even a sample clip of what that might look like after the fact. Today we want to talk about how to stabilize footage out of your GoPro. Now, does this apply only to FPV flying? No, of course not. If you have a GoPro and you want to stabilize it, maybe you have an older one where there isn't in-camera stabilization or it's just not as good as you would hope, then, you know, this is a great video and tutorial of getting you that buttery smooth footage. So maybe you've got an FPV drone, something like this. This is the DJI FPV compatible Roma F5. And I just built this recently. Um, I'm gonna do a full review of this in the future. So if that's something you're into, then make sure you watch out for that. But this is a typical five inch quadcopter. Now this is not as simple to use as the DJI FPV drone will be. Um, I happen to build this one myself, but you can also get it as a ready to fly package. Um, but anyways, this thing is meant to carry a GoPro with the kind of included with the GoPro frame. You can attach it on here. It comes with a hard plastic ABS mount, um, which I'll talk about in the review. But the GoPro gets mounted on here and then you fly around like that. Of course, you've got the DJI FPV air unit camera on the front and then the GoPro on top to get 4K high quality footage. So let's say you've got something like this or you're looking at something like this or you want to maybe try something like this what do you do with the gopro footage how do you get that super smooth footage that you see on youtube and other places on the internet that's what we're going to talk about today so what can you expect after you stabilize your footage after the fact with the program which i will talk about in a second here let's take a look at a sample check this out So that footage came from my DJI FPV powered CineWhoop, which I reviewed recently. I'll link that video up here and down below as well, so you can check that out after watching this video. That footage was all from this GoPro right here. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is definitely not the latest and greatest. This is actually a GoPro Hero 6 Black. Nowadays we're up to nine, and uh, there's actually a specific reason why I'm happy that I still have my old and trusty GoPro Hero 6. And specifically on the 6 Black, firmware version 1.6. So if you have a later firmware, I believe you can even downgrade to version 1.6, and you want to do that for a specific reason. It just makes it a little bit easier to work with the files. If you don't have that or you have a newer one, that's not a problem. Um, it's just a little bit of different workflow, um, just one extra step, it's not a huge deal. So let's jump on the computer and I will show you how this all works, what it's all about. If you haven't seen it yet, it'll be kind of your first introduction to Real Steady, and also the settings I used to achieve the results which you saw in the clip at the beginning. All right, let's jump on there. Okay, so we've got Real Steady Go Open, and like I said, it's a standalone app which you can download, and there's even a free trial. So just hang on till the end and I'll show you how to get that. You launch the app and then you've got, it's kind of simple, you've got load video and save video. So the first step is you click load video and then you've got a file browser and we're going to go to the folder which I have um, for this project and here's a sample clip. Now this is just a regular standard GoPro file straight from the GoPro and inside this file is actually some gyro data which Realsteady uses. So we're going to open this. It's gonna run some numbers and figure out this gyro data embedded in the file. And the kind of newer and faster computer you have, the quicker this runs. Um, but if you're patient, you can get it to run on older machines as well. And here it does the gyro and video sync. And you can see this black on the side on the top here 
that is the part of the frame that it's gonna cut out to make it um, smooth. And I'll show you what I mean in a second here. All right, so what it does here, it looks through the gyro data in the video file and tries to match up the gyro data with the video movements in the file. It's not always perfect. And the, depending on which GoPro you have, it has to do multiple sync points or just two. And with the GoPro Hero 6 Black, it does just two sync points. All right, so let's check that out. Okay, so it's done doing that. And let's take a look and see here. If we play the clip, you'll see that it's kind of choppy and that's, that's okay. That's um, just the way it is. And you can see the kind of stabilized result and it kind of does this on the fly and that's why it's so choppy. So what you want to do is you can look, click on this green point, you can hit adjust or delete. If you want to move your sync point, you would delete this one and then add a new one with this here and you click adjust. For these kind of sync points, you want to pick a clip where there's not a lot of movement and this here with this uh, frame getting kind of wedged in here, this is a frame where there's lots of movement. So you definitely don't want to use that. Sometimes the automatic, uh, sync point tool or whatever it does just is like that. So that's not a good point. So I'm going to delete that one. And let's see, ideally I pick a, a piece of uh, footage where there is movement, but I'm kind of flying straight. Um, so this one, there's a little bit of sideways movement. So I don't want to pick that. This would be too much. Let's see if I fly straight here. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to turn around. All right, so that's not bad right here. Just kind of flying down the beach. Okay, so I like that, so I'm going to pause it. I'm going to add my manual sync point here. And after it does its thing, it'll show me a green marker. Okay, now I can hit adjust. And you can see it kind of just plays this section of the clip over and over. And then you can manually adjust it. So let's say you want to move it to the left. Now look at the edge of the frame. You will see some wiggle. So you know that that's not the direction you want to go. And if you go to the other extreme, there's definitely some wiggle going on here. And now look and see how that compares to this in the middle. This actually looks the smoothest. And this is usually the case if you want to do slight tweaks in either direction, you can figure out the best, but I found that most of the time it does a pretty good job. I leave that in the middle. Now let's look at the second one. Let's hit adjust. Ah, once again, that's not what we want. So I'm going to delete that. And let's see. Oh, perfect. Flying straight over the water here. So I'm going to add a sync point here. It does its thing. Perfect. There's a slight movement to the right, but let's see if we can, the clip that it uses should be short enough. There we go. Perfect. So once again, I'm going to move this all the way to the left. And there's some jiggle right here. Look at some vibrations. See that? Now let's go all the way to the other extreme. Yeah, same. I see some movement here and here. You kind of want to look at the sides. So let's see in the middle. That looks pretty smooth. So I'm going to keep it there. All right, so we've got our two sync points. Um, like I said, if you've got a different hero than the Hero 6, um, you'll see multiple sync points and you'll have to do this a couple times and that's fine. It doesn't take that long. So let's take a look at the settings. Now there's a couple different modes here. You can lock the horizon and locking the horizon just keeps the horizon kind of locked. That's what that means. It keeps it horizontal, the footage. So if you're doing rolls, it'll keep the horizon kind of flat. Now for FPV, you normally don't want this, but there's a use case for when you could use this. Let's say you're trying to do a Cinewhoop style shot and you're not doing flips and rolls and you want that horizon to be perfectly um, kind of locked in. You would use that setting for that. Now, if you do lock it and you're doing flips and rolls, it's going to zoom in so far into the footage because the center will be the only thing that it can kind of crop into without seeing the movement around the sides and um, just play around with this, try it, try it out and you'll see what I mean. Special setting for time-lapse if you're using the GoPro for a time-lapse and then there's cropping speed. 
And you'll see in um, a couple sections of the clip here that if you do fast erratic movements, before those fast turns, for example, it also kind of just zooms in. And that is because it'll have to crop in to get rid of the motion around the outside to make it smooth, that's what it does. So a couple of tips, you can do erratic flying, but just know that it's gonna have to zoom way in and then it starts getting a little bit pixelated if it's too erratic. So kind of keep that in mind when you're flying around. Um, try to be consistent and smooth with your movements to get smooth, stabilized shots. And if you've got the GoPro mounted upside down, you can hit the flip gyro data button. For this example, I'm just gonna leave everything in normal. Okay, so we've got our sync points, video is good, then you hit save video. Now, it puts this video file in the same file which the original GoPro file is in. So if you're hunting down where this thing went, that's where it is. Okay, so now it renders. It goes through each frame with the gyro data based on the sync points that we selected, and it goes through and smooths out the footage. This can take quite a while, even if your computer is pretty beefy, but it's the price we pay for buttery smooth footage. Now let's compare a clip that came straight out of the GoPro and what it looks like after it's been stabilized with Real Steady. Now notice that the raw GoPro clip is a kind of weird format. It's definitely not the widescreen that you would expect. And this clip is in a four by three aspect ratio. Many of you know that on the GoPro, you can select four by three or 16 by nine. And four by three just gives the camera more vertical pixels to record. And for real steady, this is important. That way it has more pixels to work with and it kind of crops a 16 by nine portion out of that four by three. If you start with just 16 by nine, it has limited vertical space to crop out of. And so you get something that's super flat and will not fit that 16 by nine or 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So I recommend doing four by three, just like this. And now let's take a look at the real steady clip. And as you can tell, this is way, way smoother. There's no micro vibrations. And some of those things could be tuned out a little bit with a different beta flight tune. But it's nice to know that if your quad is not 100% smooth, which is kind of impossible to get, especially when you have a camera on it, the different types of mounts can kind of increase vibrations. And uh, yes, you can do things to reduce that, but to get rid of them 100%, is very, very difficult. So something like Real Steady is an essential tool if you wanna get that perfectly smooth footage out of your GoPro. So how to get your hands on Real Steady? Well, there's a free trial. Check out the link in the description below. You can download it there and try it out. And if you're happy with the results and you wanna buy the program, yes, it does um, cost a little bit of money. I've got a promo code down there, which will save you a couple bucks at least, a little something. I know it's just one more thing to get, but the kind of footage you can get out of your GoPro, which you already have, is really, really impressive. So if you're serious about your FPV footage or maybe you're trying to get some uh, you know, commercial clients, it is really just essential to get it. So check it out, and if you like it, once again, don't forget to use that promo code. So let's talk about the best settings for the GoPro. The GoPro Hero 6, which I used on these clips, was shot in four by three aspect ratio. Uh, ProTune was on. Stabilization in camera was turned off. So I shot four by three 4K at 25 frames per second. You can go 30 frames per second, or you can shoot lower resolutions at higher frames per second. Just kind of play with it and go from there. But all these clips that I used were recorded at 25 frames per second. Now I've used various ND filters on here and gotten the shutter speed manually locked in at the 180 degree shutter rule. And while that is perfect if your lighting doesn't change, if you're flying in and out of trees in kind of dark areas and lighter areas, aimed at the sun, aimed away, it's really hard to get proper exposure with just the one shutter speed. So what I've been doing lately is ditching the ND filters actually, setting this up on automatic shutter speed and just locking the ISO from 100 to 400. That way it doesn't boost it too much in the darker areas. And I've found that this gets me a more consistent 
um, kind of lighting situation in my GoPro footage. People have also gotten great results with the GoPro set to 2.7K as the video bandwidth is greatest there. If you have one of the later GoPros, you have even more video bandwidth and that way you don't have as many pixels using up that video bandwidth. Um, just play around and see which you like best. So that is how I use Real Steady personally with my GoPro Hero 6 Black. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that. Would you consider using a tool like Real Steady to smooth out your GoPro footage? Do you already use something like this? Are you happy with perhaps the in-camera stabilization if you have a later version of the GoPro? Um, let me know down below. Let's get into a great conversation with you guys. And of course, if you want to check it out, download the free trial. Give it a try. Play around with some of the settings. Until next time, check out some of these other videos. I've got two options here for you. Um, I have almost a, a hunch that one of those will be DJI FPV drone related. It's been a big topic on the channel. And if you're, of course, interested in that, don't forget to subscribe and check out the playlist for DJI FPV. All right, take care, guys. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.